Hello, I'm Paul Donnelly and I'm Acting Principal Curator here at the Powerhouse Museum. We're at the Powerhouse Discovery Centre and one of our ob large object stores. And today we're going to have a look in one of our furniture bays and specifically um, Chair Bay 3. And chairs are a fantastic insight into society of any one particular time and especially the post-war period. And the chairs today will show aspirations of society at the time changes in domestic technology and, and sizes of houses, um, advances in materials, and as well as some, some design subversions as well. So let's go to day three. So looking at furniture of the post-war period, it's hard to go beyond the Eameses as a, as a good start. So Charles and Ray Eames, American-born and based designers, architects and designers. Here are some of their fiberglass and wire and also one of the famous um, dining chair wood examples. And this is a particularly good example of the advances that the Eames has made towards modern design and specifically modern furniture. Um, because of their wartime activities, learning how to, to form, plywood um, when they were working in aircraft factories and also making splints for military personnel, injured military personnel, they, um, they were able to really hone their skills in plywood. We have some George Nelson, another American designer, George Nelson. This is the daft chair with the lovely swage tubular legs and a very well-known coconut chair also by George Nelson. And then crossing over to Australia, let's but keeping an American theme, we have Douglas Snelling here, who also practiced in California, came to, the, to Australia in the 1940s, had a very successful architectural business, but also had on the side the company Functional Products, and he made some very popular chairs, such as these web dining chairs here. At the same time, we have a flock of Featherstons. This is Grant Featherston, who in 1966 was joined by his wife Mary. Um, First of the contour chair range, this is R152, quite, quite stayed in comparison to the later developments of the contour range, which became more and more sculptural and encompassing. But um, quite in, ingenious use of technology, which you'll be able to pursue on our website. The Mitzi chair that he did in the 60s with um, Aristoc Industries, the Aristoc made metal furniture, it really did lend itself very well to, to Grant Featherston's style which was very light and, um, and very attractive to look at. In Italy people like Giaponti were, were drawing on the vernacular furniture of village lifestyle for their inspiration and um, but this is called the super leggera or super light and it's incredibly light just on my little finger I can hold this and there's no effort whatsoever. It's um, a fantastic um, experiment an experiment in, in using wood and yet making something extreme, extremely light. It's um, using a um, triangular section here, so we're saving on materials. It's not using a square section, which would be much heavier. It's, um, you can see how fine these struts here are, and yet this can be dropped out of a two-story building and just bounce and we, it'll survive fine. It's a, a fantastic design which is still going today. Frank Gehry, a famous architect, released a range of corrugated cardboard chairs in the 1970s, which have been re-released -re lately. Um, an interesting take on throwaway furniture, even though they were reasonably expensive even in their day, and um, very sculptural, a real statement in, in um, modern design. The Scandinavians preferred the, the natural look. They, this is a beautiful sculptural chair by Hans Venja, and um, this kind of furniture was very influential on other designers, such as Eames and Serenin, who we see here, but only using different materials. Ernest Race designed these very distinctive antelope chairs for the 1951 Festival of Britain. Um, back in Australia, people like Roger McClay were coming to terms with the lack of technology that people like the Eames has had and so like the Featherstons he devised ways of being able to to bend plywood without the expensive steam technology. Here we have some Gordon Andrews best known for our 
a bank, just more banknote range, but he was also a furniture and interior designer too. And, um, and here we have the Rondo chair and a perch here, which were both designed for his Olivetti showroom designs. Mead Moore in the 1950s, he, he left Australia in 1963 to become a very well-known sculptor in New York. Before he did that, he, he earned a good design award in 1953 with his cord range of chairs. Fast forwarding to 1988, we have the G'day chair here, and bicentennial of course, and a time when Australia was looking at itself and, um, and celebrating what it was to be Australian, and so this chair made up of the letters G, D, A and Y, G'day. A later version which was dressed up by Jenny Bannister for a charity auction. Mies chair here, this was a, a chair designed by an Italian group called Archizoom, who um, were very much, this is known as an anti-design kind of statement whereby they were, they were questioning the adherence to the great architects such as Le Corbusier and Mies van der Rohe and their tenets of less is more. So whilst it looks uncomfortable, which is a deliberate choice on their part, it actually was a usable piece of furniture, but nevertheless um, a sly kind of criticism of, of the designs of the pre-war. Mark Newson, Australia's most famous and successful international design export. This is the embryo chair, and this is a particular powerhouse connection in that we were involved in its concept and design. We supported um, financially the, the development of this chair, initially produced by DDC and later taken on by ID. And over to one of my favourites here, chair by Joe Colombo, the elder chair. Joe Colombo, a prodigious Italian designer, um, had very imaginative, um, died only at the age of 40, but not, not, after, not before he had designed a huge range of, of items. And this particular one here is very James Bondish, you can just imagine a Goldfinger figure stroking some cat on his lap and a real masculine statement. So um, plenty more of chairs around me as you can see and I recommend that you go to the Powerhouse website, drop down the tab for our search the collection and you'll be able to find out a lot more there.